Today's video all about calcium and magnesium is part of a nutrient series that I'm putting together and I did make a comprehensive guide that is available to you for free either in the description box or right here. I'll also put a card at the end of the video for that because you're going to want to download that guide. It has this video's content plus all the other content in the macronutrient series. So without further ado, let's get into calcium and magnesium. When would you need calcium and magnesium. Well, let's talk about all the things that already have calcium and magnesium. Then we can talk about the plants that need calcium and magnesium, and you can decide if you need to supplement with it based off of that information. So first off, let's talk about the water in your garden. Now, if you're using tap water, then you can actually go on Google and just type in the city that you live in and the contents of the tap water and AI will actually generate one of these really nice little sheets for you. And that's really handy to know what you're already starting with as a base if you're using tap water. So I really shouldn't put tap water in the county where really it's kind of like anything except for filtered water. So uh, me, for example, I have a rainwater in catchment. So I use rainwater, which comes from the ocean right there and it gets caught in a huge tank right back here and goes straight into my house's pipes. And then there's only a one stage filter. Uh, we don't drink that water, but I do use it for my plants. So frankly, I actually have no idea what's really in my water that I'm giving to my plants, but I can tell you that there's plenty of calcium and magnesium because I haven't had a deficiency show itself yet. And that's a great way to tell if you actually need calcium and magnesium. First, you look at the contents of your tap water. Does this already contain calcium and magnesium? Then we're gonna look at our nutrients themselves. So I use this three-part general hydroponics flora series and as it turns out the macronutrients contain plenty of calcium and the grow contains plenty of magnesium. So this is going to be for about 70% of the plants right across the board. You're not going to need calcium and magnesium if you're not stripping your water, if you're not using filtered water from like a reverse osmosis filter or, or like distilled water where you're going to have like a zero parts per million, a, a zero electric conductivity in that water. If you do that, if you use filtered water or stripped water, then you will need to add calcium and magnesium likely. And I would do it in a small, small amount because like I said, your three-part nutrient solution is already going to contain calcium and magnesium. So then it really becomes about what you're planning on growing. So certain plants like tomatoes, peppers, broccoli, cauliflower, they require more calcium than other plants. So these are plants you're going to want to keep a very close eye on if you don't add it to start off with. Another sneaky thing about calcium deficiency is sometimes it doesn't show itself until the flowering stage. And a lot of times it identifies itself with these brown spots on the bottom of your peppers or your tomatoes. That is calcium deficiency 100%. Calcium is responsible for building out the structures of the plant and that is most relevant uh, during the fruiting stage. So sometimes you won't even notice a calcium deficiency until your plant really requires the calcium. And sometimes it's a little bit too late by that point. Now we're gonna get into the really difficult part of identifying a calcium or a magnesium deficiency. So I'm gonna to touch on this a lot more in a video later this week. So make sure you're subscribed for that. But I'm gonna go over the basic things that you're gonna look for with a calcium deficiency and with a magnesium deficiency. Now the really tricky thing about, especially like a calcium deficiency, is that it shows itself very similarly to like a nitrogen or an iron deficiency. It's just this general chlorosis. So I'm gonna be doing a video all about chlorosis, all the different types of deficiencies that can cause chlorosis and that's gonna be in a later video just know that that's the number one thing that you're gonna to want to look out for with the calcium and magnesium deficiency meaning that the green chlorophyll in the plant that absorbs the sunlight and is the charger for photosynthesis is dying and they turn yellow when they die this happens naturally in the fall and chlorosis can happen with a plethora of nutrient deficiencies so the thing to do actually, if you start to notice something that identifies as either a calcium or a magnesium deficiency by looking at these pictures that I'm putting up on the screen, here's where I would actually start with that. Before you add calcium and magnesium to your garden because you're noticing these different deficiencies, first check your pH, make sure your pH is on and, and watch this video if you haven't. This goes over how pH is gonna unlock certain nutrients for you. So if your pH is off, it can look like many different nutrient deficiencies. So make sure you do that first and foremost and then check your EC. Make sure you're not too light on nutrients or too heavy on nutrients because nutrient toxicity can also show up as chlorosis in your leaves with certain elements. The next thing I would do is keep a log. Keep a log of when you add nutrients, which mix you're adding so that you know if you're adding nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, calcium, magnesium, and you know when you added it so that you can keep track of your plant's growth when you added these nutrients and have a general idea of maybe what nutrients are still gonna be left in the water. 
Then I would just add a small amount of your micro blend, whatever you're using for your micronutrients. If you just add a half dosage to your garden and see what that does over the course of a week. If it gets worse, then add a half dosage of Cali Magic or whatever you're using for your calcium and magnesium. Wait to see how that shows itself. And if it gets even worse, if your leaf edges are starting to brown and die and it seems like your plant isn't gonna make it, then I would just do a complete flush of your system, empty out all the water and completely refill that with brand new nutrients and do a half dose of calcium and magnesium. Because frankly, what the bottle recommends isn't taking into account what is already in your nutrients and already in your tap water. So if you do a full dosage based on what the manufacturer recommends of your calcium and magnesium, then you're probably adding too much calcium and magnesium and then you can have calcium calcium toxicity, which locks out other nutrients, and that looks a lot like a nitrogen deficiency as well. So really nailing these two comes down to knowing what's in your tap water when you start out, knowing what's in your three-part nutrient blend, and then knowing if the plant you're growing, like tomatoes or peppers or broccoli or cauliflower, are going to require more calcium. And those are plants you're going to want to keep an eye on to see if you notice any of this yellowing or browning of the edges of the leaves. So here's another link for that guide. Be sure to go download that. It's totally free to you. It's going to be a really helpful resource. It also is going to give you a little bit of a sneak peek into what's in the other videos I'm releasing this week. I also have Cali Magic linked up in the description box below if this video made you realize that is something that you're going to need to grab. Overall, I hope this was a great help for you. Let me know in the comments below and let's grow together.